Hi, my name is Rickard Dardeen, and I'm a creative director. I've designed for a wide variety of brands, from video games to charities, and after 15 years, the thing that still excites me most is creating original, photo-based images. And that's what I now teach other photographers, designers, and digital artists to do. So hey guys, welcome back to AYP, and we have a really awesome guest today, Rickard Rodin, a master at Photoshop Composites. We met because when I was researching this book on mood lines, I came across his website where he had a whole analysis of all the mood lines and various different photographs that went along with those. So we've gotten to know each other since then. So Rickard, welcome to the AYP channel. It's great to have you here. Thank you, glad to be here. Okay, so we're gonna talk about Photoshop compositing, which is a really, from my point of view, a real tricky area. And I love to hear from you some of the do's and don'ts and what we should do and what we shouldn't do and how to make these things really work. When you start a composite, you need to make sure that the images that you're gathering to do the composite with are gonna match up. And the two areas that I see the most mistakes being made on is perspective and light source. This is a very common uh, format for a poster where they have kind of the big heads, character heads at the top, and then some action at the bottom. And here you can see that two of the characters have similar lighting. So they have pretty strong side lighting, but then the third character on the right has like a front side light coming in. That's quite different from the other two. Whereas in this composite here, it's the same format of poster, the three big heads and the small action. But in this one, you can see that the photos all have the same lighting and the same light source. And what's the actionable item to fix that? One is if you're gathering images, look for where's the light source in the image and also look for where's the horizon line. So I actually have an example here, and you can see I put a fox in here. And if I turn off the mask on that fox, you can see that the ground in this photo is very similar to the ground in this photo in terms of the angle and the perspective. So by looking at those two things, when I looked at the photos that I was gonna use for the composite, I could make sure that when I then put this image into the composite, it looks like it belongs there. I worked with an art director for a really large video game company and he gave me one suggestion in terms of composites. If you can avoid showing the feet, don't show them. Why is that? Because feet are the one thing that show you perspective. The feet is what tells you where the horizon line is. So by not showing the feet, that gives you more leeway in a composite because you're not showing the thing that's going to give away the perspective of that image. And how about the second tip? The next one is uh, selections and really taking the time to make a good selection in this image here where you can quite easily see where the image was cut out. And that immediately tells you, okay, this is a composite. And compare that to something like this, where someone's really taken the time to, to make a good selection. And in terms of an actionable tip on that, when I first started using uh, Photoshop and started compositing, I always used the pen tool. But in the last year, I've started more and more using the tools that Photoshop provides for automatic selection. And that's a kind of a reflection of the fact that the AI in Photoshop is getting better and better. And if you go to the quick selection tool here and click on select subject, you can see that right away, if I hit Q for quick mass, you can see that right away, Photoshop has done 90% of the work for me. And then I can go into select and mask here and I can do the rest of the work in here. So those, those are kind of now the, my workflow for compositing and selecting is I use one of either the quick selection or select subject. And then from there, I go into select and mask and refine my selection. And one trick here is this smart radius, always turn that on and set the pixel to somewhere between three and five pixels, depending on the resolution of your image. So the higher resolution your image is, uh, make that radius bigger. The smaller the resolution of your image, make that radius smaller. So if you have an image that's less than a thousand pixels across, only do one pixel. 
But if you have an image like that's five or six thousand pixels across, uh, use about five or six pixel radius on that smart radius. And what that'll do is it'll use the information in the image for Photoshop's AI to determine where that selection should be. About one pixel per thousand is the rule of thumb. Yes, that's a great rule of thumb. Awesome, Rickard. So what's our, what's our next tip? So our next tip is depth. The best way you're going to create depth is with atmospheric depth. And by that, I mean that things are for, that are farther away are going to be less contrasty and have kind of a layer of mist on top of them. And things that are closer to you are going to be higher contrast. So here you can see everything pretty much has the same contrast. And it's not a very impressive composite as it stands here because it just looks like a tiny little ant of a man next to a large deer. But by creating some depth, it immediately becomes more impressive, right? So just by lowering the contrast heavily on the deer and increasing the contrast of the man, we've created that depth. If you want to push something into the background, decrease the contrast. If you want to bring it forward, increase the contrast. When you're matching elements, so like in this case, I took the fox from one photo and added it to this composite of a woman. But as you can see in the photo of the fox, the fox was further in the distance. And so you have that um, low, the black point, which is gray instead of black. And to fix that, I've added a levels layer in here. And essentially what I did is, and you can just look at it visually to see when it matches, but just take your black point and pull it up until it matches your background. So it's not quite black. This would be black. But if I do that, you can see that the fox is higher contrast than she is. So you want to just move that slider until it looks like the fox is where it should be in the image. Okay, what else you got for us? Okay, so the next thing is color. When you've composited your image, you want to use a color grade to get all the elements of the composite to look good together. So you can see here, I have a composite that I did. So without the color grade, it looks like elements that have been cut out and put together. And here, I'm just going to turn on the color grade and immediately the whole image feels like it's coming together is better integrated. A simple trick that you can do is use gradient, use a gradient map at the top of your composite. If we go down to gradient maps down here and just add a gradient map, and this one goes from blue to yellow, and then put that on soft light, right away it gives the whole image a color grade. And you can turn that on and off select another one here you can see that pulls the whole image together so the last one is actually more of an artistic point and that's when you're doing your composite and this applies to photography as well you want to put your subject in the middle not in the front and what i mean by that is your image generally is going to have a background a middle and a foreground and you want your subject, like the main element of your composite, to be in the middle, not in the foreground. So here you can see a composite. The cutout is quite good. The colors integrate, but it still feels like just two things pasted on top of each other. And compare that to this image here. Now what's the difference? The difference is this one has a background, a middle, and a foreground. So by just adding those birds in the foreground, it makes the whole composite feel more three-dimensional. Can you uh, give us a quick summary of those five tips? Yes, I can. First, match your elements. So that means perspective and look at the horizon line. And the second thing is light source. Make sure that the light source is relatively similar between the elements that you're compositing together. Second thing is selections. Spend time on your selections. When I do a composite, 80% of my time is spent on making the selections and the cutouts. The last 20% is spent on putting them together, adding some effects, and color grading. Next, depth. Pay attention to depth, and specifically pay attention to atmospheric depth. 
So the farther something is into the background, the less contrast it has, the closer it is to camera or closer to the foreground, the higher contrast it is. Next is color. Use color to pull a whole image together. Pull everything together with a color gradient uh, or a gradient map at the top. Okay, lastly, put your subject in the middle. Have a foreground, a middle, and a background. Put your subject in the middle. And the simplicity of that is have a few elements that come in front of the subject of your composite. So those are your five steps. Do those five things and your composites will be infinitely better. So Ricker, those are awesome tips. How can people find out more about your stuff and what you do? Well, I have a YouTube channel where I have a bunch of tutorials and I also add a new tutorial every week. I also have professional training at nuclei.com and on there you can get premium courses where I actually take you through the entire workflow of a composite and explain every tool, every technique, and every effect as I go, as well as show you all the shortcuts. Thanks again, Rickard, awesome. Thank you for joining us. Remember to subscribe to both of our channels. We want you to like us and leave comments because you can leave comments here for Rickard. You can also go to his channel, leave comments there. You guys, remember to get out and capture your own images of life.